Good morning, or goers. So today we are going to finish up your chapter 19 material for your exam tonight. So we just have to wrap up the Michael conjugate addition reaction and the Robinson annulation reaction. So let's just take a look at some considerations that we have. So recall the phase and condensation of the alpha protons after condensation are even more acidic when they were on the starting material. So by that, I mean if I had the starting material over here, okay, the protons that are attached to this ester we said were extremely acidic because of their proximity to an electronegative group like the ester, which pulls the electron density via induction towards that side, which makes it very easy for a base to just pluck off of those hydrogens. Then we said that if we did a condensation reaction with, like, let's just say another equivalent of that molecule, the acidity of the alpha protons increases even more because now we have two dipole moments from two different functional groups, which pulls the electron density even more so than they did in the starting material. All right, so we can use the products of the Claisen reactions, which we said, to then add other conjugated molecules in. So the question is why? All right, so let me give you that little rationale for why we can do these reactions. <clears throat> So if I were to take a molecule such as, let's just say it's this one, okay? So it's an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl. So this is a conjugated molecule. So it's conjugate addition. That's what Michael reaction is. So you take a conjugated molecule and you're adding that into a Claisen product. So this is an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl. And this molecule does have an alternate resonance structure. So I can take that pi bond, um, resonate it in, and push those pi electrons on the carbonyl up onto the oxygen. So the product of this step would be something that looks like this. And I'll rewrite the alpha and beta in. So as you can see through these resonance structures that there is electrophilic character at the beta carbon. So that means that we can do what? Well, we said that since, let me just draw back in that starting material. We said that we can use a base, such as like NaOME, to depronate those hydrogens because of how acidic they are. Okay, so that makes this a nucleophile. So if I were to get rid of that hydrogen, oops. If I were to get rid of that hydrogen, now I know that my um, enolate is in a nucleophile. And that nucleophile can add in to the electrophile that is at the beta position through the resonance structures. So we can do conjugate addition in this manner, all right? So let me just do some examples with you so that can make some more sense, all right? All right, so let's just do this quick example. So my apologies, I should have wrote two equivalents here so you guys understood that it was a condensation reaction. But you're basically going to form the Claisen product first. So the Claisen product is something like this. Okay, and don't forget that it's still in an enolate form because we don't have a separate, we don't have step two being an acid workup step, so it's just in the enolate position. Then I need to label my alpha and beta positions on the um, micro, the conjugated product that I have over here. So clearly I'm going to add into the beta position. All right, so if I could rationalize those types of mechanistic arrows, it's going to be from the enolate attacking at the beta position, pushing those pi electrons over, and then pushing them up on the carbonyl. So I'm just going to draw the product of this step. So that's going to be something that looks like this. Okay, so if I want to count my carbons, it's one, two, three. So I have one, two, three. Oops. One, two, three. And at carbon number one, which I just added, don't forget you have this extra substituent. Okay. And carbon 2 has a methyl group, and carbon 3 is the O minus O E T. Okay, so, and then don't forget that we had that pi bond that was pushed over there. So, in that step, remember we still have ethanol in solution, E T O H. So, what I can do is push those electrons off of the oxygen alkoxide anion. And this pi electron can grab a hydrogen from that ethanol in solution to now form my product, which is going to be and surely you are receiving at let me show this product right at this position. Oops. 
you are of change colors. So you're a racemic here, you're a racemic here, and you're a racemic here. So you would expect a mixture of about eight stereoisomers. So that's a lot. Eight stereoisomers. So that is the product of this reaction. So just remember that we can depronate at the alpha position because of how acidic those protons are, and then add it into the beta position of a conjugated molecule to extend the carbon chain in this fashion. All right? So that's pretty much all I got. So let's move on to the next one. All right. So in this molecule, we see that we have LDA greater than or greater than one equivalent. So that's going to tell me that I'm under kinetic control. So basically, I know that I'm going to have my enolate on the left substituted position. That's all it's going to tell me. Also, I see that I have a conjugated molecule over here. So let's label alpha and beta. So I know that that enolate at the left substituted position is going to add at the beta position, push those electrons over, and then push that up. So the product of that step is going to look like something like this. So remember, I'm just pancake flipping that cyclohexane because I like to have my enolate oriented to my right. And then the carbon-carbon bond step is, let me number these, one, two, three. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three. At position two, you have a methyl group. And at position three, you have, oops, you have that. Okay, this is our molecule, so then the next key mechanistic step is to, remember we still have base and solution, so let's just say, let's just call it um, that, so then water can resonate down, and that pi can take off that electron and put it in there. Um, the base is um, LDA in this case. I'm just putting water because I'm not going to expect you to know the structure of LDA, and neither is Dr. Peterson. So in this case, it really is the base that should have been used is LDA, and that pi electron should have grabbed a hydrogen off of a protonated LDA molecule, but we don't know the structure of that, so let's just assume it's water in this case, and then the end product is going to be something like this. All right, so don't forget that you are racemic at two different positions here. You are racemic when you're coming off, and you're racemic over here. All right, so that is the Michael product. Oh, and don't forget the hydrogen. And that is the Michael product. All right, so that is the end products for this reaction. And then let's just do one final one. So before I do this final one, I just want to go back to some considerations. So when performing a Michael addition reaction, the carbonyl that was added might be able to perform a ring closing reaction with another carbonyl, similar to aldol. So that's what Robinson is. So let's just, oh, I erased the original product, but any of these end products are susceptible to doing another ring closing reaction like an aldol. Okay, so let's just an example of that. So you see that we have this Claisen condensation product on the left, and we have this alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl. So this is most definitely going to be a Michael-type addition reaction. So we're going to add in, so we have a sodium ethoxy um, base, and this anion is going to be generated, and then that anion is going to attack the beta position, push those electrons over, and push that up. So the product of that reaction is going to look something like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, so one, one. Okay, so I'm skipping a couple of mechanistic steps because I'm assuming you can generate the product from that. Now, it's important to do a numbering scheme. So let me just do, start from this carbonyl. I'm arbitrarily calling that number one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I want to say that, actually, let me just show a couple more mechanistic steps to maybe prove why I can do this. So I have this product. So if I enable that 1, 2, 3, 4, we can see that 1, 2, 3, 4. So the pi bond is now between 2 and 3. We have an O minus, and then that's pretty much it. So don't forget that we still have ethanol in solution, E-T-O-H. So the mechanistic arrows for that would be these electrons going down, grabbing off a hydrogen, doing that. So at this point right now, I just generated more ethoxy anion. Okay, minus ethoxy anion. So remember, we did say that this is the product of doing that mechanistic step, so now we're here. But that ethoxy anion can now be used to deprotonate any of the alpha positions over here, over here, or over here, anything like that. That can be deprotonated by the ethoxy anion, and now we can do another ring-closing reaction, and that is the Robinson reaction. So clearly, at number six, I can deprotonate that enolate and those uh, alpha hydrogens, and then form an enolate, and then that attacks carbon number one to do a ring-closing. 
So I can see that I'm going to have two cyclohexane rings fused together. So that's going to look something like this. Okay. And we have, uh, let me just cons be consistent with my numbering. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So at position number six, we have the aldol, uh, al uh, ketone, I'm sorry, ketone. At position number two, we have the hydroxyl. And at position three, we have the ester. Okay, so now, remember, we can think about whether or not we are going to dehydrate. So we are under thermodynamic conditions, so we would expect that the alkene is going to form in conjugation, which is starting with, with that uh, ketone, rather. Okay, and that is the end product of our Robinson annulation reaction. All right, and that's pretty much it.